Now we continue chapter 2 of milk and dairy products. We discuss the main characteristics of milk. In this chapter, what do we talk? We give a short introduction what milk is and then we discuss the composition and structure of milk. Composition means what component and then how many percentage do they occupy. And then what component are they in milk and then how many percentage they occupy, which means composition. And the structure or texture means how do they look in detail. And then the third part, we talk about milk formation and accretion. How milk is formed, is synthesized in the mammary glands and then how it is excreted out for the baby cow to take or for us to, to do the milking. Then in the fourth part, we will talk about the main differences in composition of different kinds of milk like cow milk, buffalo milk, human milk, pig milk, horse milk and so on. What are the main differences? Then we will have a look at that. And then in the last part of the chapter, we will discuss the fact which influence milk composition. If we analyze milk from a cow A and then analyze milk composition of a cow B, then the composition is not the same. If we take milk from this farm and we compare with the other farm, the composition is not exactly the same. So there are quite a number of factors which influence like the season, like the feed, like the, what breeds of cow and so on. And then we will have a look into detail. When we see this means that actually milk composition is not a constant, but it is somehow varying based on different factors that we would see what are they. Right, so we go to the first part, introduction. What is milk? In biological term or meaning, milk is defined as the secret from the mammary glands of the mammals. Mammals are animals which have mammary glands. Mammary glands like And then the primary function of milk is to provide nutrients to the young, to the infant. It's kind of different for human. Normally for other animals, they will not take milk from the mother animal than when they grow up a little bit. When they are just born, when they are infant, they take milk from the mother, but when they can take solid feed from outside, they will reduce and then stop using milk from the mother. But for human, we when we were young, then we take milk from the mother. When we a bit, little bit grow up, we take milk from other sources, like from cow milk, and then we still eat dairy, dairy products and so on. So we still consume milk for whole life, and that is the reason why we study this course. Now, during this course, when we use the word milk, then we have to agree with each other that we are talking about normal milk from healthy cow from normal cows okay because cow milk is the main source of sorry milk teacher, for human consumption. your mic is work really no. i didn't hear anything mm. i'll check again okay i just repeat again that when we talk together the term or the word milk then we have to agree that we are talking about cow milk normal milk from normal cow from healthy cows okay because cow milk is the main source of milk for human consumption for processing of milk and dairy products now we go to the second part we talk about composition and structure of milk do you see any image okay this is milk if we look by our normal eyes naked eyes we do not see any particles we just see a homogeneous liquid but actually milk is not a homogeneous liquid if we have a microscopy is that okay but if we have a microscopy and we look into more detail then now we start to see particles now milk is not a real homogeneous liquid that 
we imagine so far but actually it has particles so now what do you see first if we zoom in we see first fat globules the globules which contain mainly fat and then the remaining if we take the fat out fat globules out then the remaining of meal is called plasma okay so up to here we have to agree with each other that milk is not a solution what is solution how can you make any solution if you add a solid you dissolve a solid into a solvent like water like you put salt you dissolve salt into water you have a solution of sodium chloride because salt dissolve completely in water but milk is not the case. Milk has particles inside a continuous phase. Now, because we see particles which are dispersed, dispersed in a continuous phase. So now milk rather a dispersion. You can call a dispersion la he fang tang. It's not a solution. Now, if we zoom in further, we look more into detail. The fat globules now become larger, and the fat globules now are surrounded by a membrane. This membrane is called MFGM. MFGM, mu fat globule membrane. The membrane which surround the fat globules in milk. Okay. And then now we start to see second particles, the casein micelles. Casein is protein in milk. Okay. And but these proteins are present in micelles. They molecules of casein come together, they just um, f f form a they form micelles of different size. Now it's kind of lost side that we can see it in the image like this okay now if we remove the fat lobules if we remove the case in my cell so the remaining is called serum okay. so milk will be equal to what fat globule plus plasma and plasma is equal to case in my cell plus serum okay this is how the terms are so we just try to distinguish now there's a question here. If there was no membrane here, what would happen to the fat globules if there are no membrane? The membrane here acts as a layer to cover the fat globule to act as emulsifier. Okay. If there was no membrane, no emulsifier, so you see that this is fat. Fat means hydrophobic or lipophilic. Why outside this is water, the aqueous phase is hydrophilic. Now the hydrophobic fat will not like water. So they hate water actually and they don't want to have contact with water. The membrane here acts as emulsifier. So the membrane has hydrophilic side which love water and this side is hydrophobic which love fat. So they can be at the interface. If there were no membrane, then the fat globule become hydrophobic. And then many fat globule will come together. They will come together to reduce the surface area, to reduce the contact with water outside. And then at the result, they come together from a larger globules and they may raise up to the top faster because they have smaller density compared to the density of water just to summarize here first the membrane here is to work as emulsifier to have um, uh, to to make the fat globules become hydrophilic outside so that they can disper in the water okay so what is milk? Milk is now dispersing system, but more accurate, poly dispersed system. Why poly? Because there are different particles inside, not only one kind of particle. Dispersed system of water with what? With fat globules.
these have already been emulsified by the MFGM, enveloped by the mu fat globule membrane. And the size of fat globules range from 0 0.1 to 15 micrometer. You also need to remember this for the exam. This is the size of fat globules. They are small, but not one size, a range of size from very small to larger and then to much larger than the other one. In reality, in real life, all particles actually there is a distribution from smaller to larger. No things appear at one size. Uh, for example, for example, even rice, the kernels of rice, you if you measure correctly, you will see that some kernels are shorter, some kernels are longer. And there is a distribution like this. Or even if you look at your class, you will see that some of your friend kind of shorter, the other friend kind of taller, but many of you have the the height here example okay and then we have another particle my cells are casein, in which have size from 20 to 400 nanometer nanometer means zero here by four here micrometer that is the size of my cell which is smaller than the size of fat globules we have another particles that we did not see pre in previous slides yet it is lipoprotein particles. The particles that contain lipid and contain proteins, where do they come from? These particles are actually the remnants. The remnant means the broken pieces. The small pieces which are broken from the secretory cell membrane, the cells in the mammary gland. Uh, there is a membrane there, and then this some part of this membrane can get broken into small, smaller, smaller pieces, and these are called lipoprotein particles. And the size is about 10 nanometer. And now we have particles, and then the remaining are water with soluble components in water, like albumin. Albumin are the proteins which are soluble in water. So now up to here, you already know that milk has casein, which are not soluble, which are in my cell. But milk also has protein, which are soluble in the water part. And then some sauce as well, soluble. Lactose, if the milk sugar is also soluble in the water or in the serum. Yes. Again, so here milk is not a solution but a dispersion, poly dispersion. Milk is also can call an emulsion, an emulsion of oil in water. Okay, oil droplets in water phase. That is the type of emulsion milk is. Emulsion la no. Good. Now we look at the table which give us what? Approximate composition of milk. Okay, because you asked a little bit about the emulsion, which is I just explain more in detail here. Okay, just wait a bit. So I will just explain a little bit about emulsion here, so you will be review. This is the basic knowledge of physical chemistry. You make like this an experiment at home. You take a cup and you put water into the cup. And then you also, do you see already the slide, the image that I just draw? Yeah. Okay, right. And then now you add oil into the cuff and you see that oil will stay on the top. Why oil is not dissolved in water? Because oil and water actually hate each other. Right? They are not miscible or they are immiscible okay? because they hate each other. Oil is hydrophobic, water is hydrophilic. And then oil stays above because the density of oil is smaller than the density of water. If we mix this vigorously, if we mix this vigorously, what do we see? we see that the oil will actually disperse in water. 
separate in droplets and then disperse in the water. And then if you stop mixing, then what would happen? If you stop mixing, then the oil droplets now will come together with few which is other. Mean will get dissolved in each other, become a larger droplets. They move up actively, but then when they feel they become a larger droplet, they even move up faster. Okay, and then move up faster. And at the end, you will see that the eye droplet now separate again into the top layer. It will go back the same like beginning. The questions now why we ask why the fat globules or the fat droplets will come together because fat hates water it doesn't want to contact with water so when they come together become a larger droplets means that the volume is the same the volume is the same but the surface area becomes smaller you see the same volume the same mass but when they come together into one droplets they reduce the surface area so they have less and less contact with water that's what they want because it doesn't want to contact with water hate water and then when they come into two separated layer like this and this is the contact layer now this is the surface the surface area that the two faces contact with each other and this is actually the minimal surface area that they could uh, contact right you can imagine here for example if you have a cube like this a cube like this had um, one, two, three, four, five, six, six edges. So the total of six edges will be the surface area. But if you cut into two halves, you will see that the same weight you will obtain, the same volume, but now you increase to two more faces, two more edges, right? And if you cut, cut further, you have you increase the surface area. When you combine, you reduce the surface area. So in this case, they reduce the surface area to have less contact. Now, here is an emulsion, but this emulsion is not stable because the fat club will come together and separate into two layers. So it's not a stable emulsion. Then people want to make a stable emulsion. They have to stabilize this emulsion by adding emulsifier by adding certain emulsifier. Why emulsifier can have? Okay, emulsifier normally has a basic structure like this, a hydrophilic head and then a hydrophobic tail. This is called hydrophilic head and this part is hydrophobic, hydrophobic tail. The tail which doesn't like water. The heads that like water. And when they add this emulsifier into, into making this emulsion, what would happen? This is the droplets. And now the emulsifier, the head of the emulsifier will stay outside, will direct to outside because the head loves water, but the tail loves fat. So the tail dissolves into the fat like that. Right, and then this hydrophilic has now covered the fat droplets and make it generally hydrophilic now. If there was no emulsifiers, no emulsifier, then it's hydrophobic, but now it's become hydrophilic because it's covered by uh, a layer of hydrophilic has. And now if you have two droplets of I should change the color. Okay, if you have two droplets of fat globules, it's already covered by the emulsifier. Normally, they have the same chart. They have the same chart. When they come together, they will repent from each other because they have the same chart. 
And actually, they don't need to come to each other because they are not hydrophobic anymore. But in case they come, they will repel from each other. So they will maintain small size. They will maintain small size. So means that they will maintain the small different in density between the fat and the water. Then they do not move up very fast. They do not move up fast. Maybe it take a year to move up, a month to move up, and then we call this stable, this emulsion stable, uh, stable emulsion, because it does not separate anymore. So, just to go back in the case of milk, you have fat, and you have a MFGM. MFGM will cover, and the first function of MFGM is like emulsifier. We will have a chance to discuss more in detail what is the composition of MFGM. But here we just know the first function is to prevent the coming of the fat globule and then to maintain the fat globules inside the meal. Is that clear enough for you? Mm, what can emulsifier in the meal? The caffeine or the phospholipid? Uh, we will see it in some next chapter, okay? Okay, sir. Right, we go further. So this table will tell us what approximate composition of milk, more or less composition of milk, average content in milk of what? Water. These are the main component. Water, 87.1%. Lactose, 4.6%. Lactose is a milk sugar. And then fat, 4%. Protein, 3.3%. Inside protein, we have casein. Casein, 2.6% of milk, mean around 80% of total proteins. 2.6, if you divide to this, it will be somewhere 79, 80%. Okay? So the main proteins in milk is casein. When we say milk, mean is normal milk from healthy cow. Okay. And milk contains around 0.7% um, of mineral substances, organic acids, 0.17%, and all the minor components, miscellaneous mean all the minor components, 0.15%. This column shows the average composition of milk. Now you don't remember all, but actually time to time you will remember all these figures. These are the common these are very basic information of milk that you need to actually memorize by heart. And then we already know from beginning that milk composition is not a constant, but there is quite some factor which, uh, which influence the milk composition. So there are ranges here. Eh? Ranges. For example, milk can range from this to this, lacto can range from, and then so on. It's not a fixed value. This is just an average. And if we look at dry matter, the, these are the value. Dry matter means we just look at the solid matter. We don't consider water. And then the one, the component with the highest content based on dry matter is lactose. You see, because here it says 4.6% and then fat and then proteins. Yes, so we just look at what the composition and the structure of milk. Now, this table is good because it summarizes for us what we have just discussed composition and structure together in one table. Now, milk contains fat globules. This is an illustration of fat globules. And you see the fat inside the core is actually mostly triglyceride, 40 gram. 40 gram per one kilogram of milk means 4%, right? And then this fat globules now are covered by a membrane, which is called MFGM. And this membrane does not contain only one component, but it does so many components. So this list is the component in the membrane. What do you see? Even the membrane has protein. The membrane also has lipids. But special about this is that this lipid is polylipid. 
and the lipid inside is triglyceride. Triglyceride is neutral lipid. Neutral lipids are the one that are totally hydrophobic. Phobic, okay. Polar lipids mean the one which have two polar each side. They are amphiphilic, mean they have a part hydrophilic and they have another part hydrophobic. So this is the basic structure of polar lipids. They are emulsifiers, actually. Okay. There are other components we will look later, but there are some also enzymes. There are some, thin, some minerals. And inside here, we have cholesterol. Sterone, you see sterone means cholesterol in milk. Okay, so in milk, the cholesterol distributes mostly on the MFGM. Triglyceride, the core fats, occupy a majorly part of fat in the milk means that it occupied 98 percent we will discuss in chapter 3 so the polar lipids the one on the surface and the membrane occupy only a small part but it's actually very important because it has a structural function it forms the shape yeah? in our body cells in the same our body polar lipid will form a layer surrounding the membrane of the cells also play a lot of function in the brain as well in the liver and so on because they have structural function and normally in reality we have a lot of neutral lipids we don't have a lot of polylipids the one normally we don't have enough we have deficiency of them so it's good to have more of this one now we look to another kind of particle casein in my cells case in my cell means Casein molecules, they come together to form micelle that we will discuss detail the structure in chapter 3. But here we just know that they are not soluble. They are particles in milk. And what do these micelle contain? Of course, they contain casein. 26 gram means 2.6%. Because we talk about 1 kilogram of milk. Okay? But the micelle also contain salts as well mineral especially calcium and phosphate uh, a lot of calcium and phosphate in the mice cells we already know that milk is a good source of calcium right so you see that a lot of calcium here in milk and especially in the mice cell but also contain phosphate as well Milk, especially human milk, has a good ratio of calcium and phosphate. So people want to make like supplement food to add more calcium into uh, to intake to the diet of human. Then they should also consider to add phosphate as well. You need to have a good ratio between these two to have good absorption and good functionality in the body. Then the casein micelle has water and some enzyme inside as well. We already discussed this. And then we have a third kind of particle, lipoproteins particles. If you look at the name, and you will know that they contain, of course, lipids and proteins, but also enzyme and, and water. Because milk has a lot of water. It's the environment of water. So they're only inside the fat globule that contain very little water. But in the other part, they contain quite a lot of water. Because fat and water do not want to play together. So here inside, there is very limited amount, milligram. Eh? Uh, here in my cell, a lot, and here it's a lot of water here. Okay. Uh, and this particle, the lipoprotein particle, are the broken pieces of the membrane of secretory cells. There is another particle that we did not look, we did not discuss. Yes, leukocyte. What is leukocyte? Leukocyte is white blood cell. This is a cell from the blood. But somehow, this cell can enter the milk. We will discuss how it can enter the milk later. Okay? Uh, the leukocytes are the cell in the blood, so they carry many enzymes, especially catalase. Because the cell from the body cell, so they also have have nucleic acids of course and water leukocyte or white blood cell are actually antibody 
you know, antibody, when they an infection, when, when the pathogen try to, for example, invest into our body, if we have some cut on our skin, then the bacteria try to enter, but then our body will synthesize a lot of leukocyte, a lot of white blood cell. The white blood cell will go to that cut plate to prevent the bacteria, to kill bacteria. Right? So when there is an infection, there will be an increase in leukocyte. If you have cough, for example, if you have fever, you go to the hospital and people take a blood sample and they analyze. One of the most important parameters they analyze is leukocyte. And they abbreviate like this, L-E-U. They call it leukocyte. If the number of leukocyte is much higher than normal, then they will tell you that you actually have infection, maybe sore throat. The bacteria that, that grow uh, at your throat or uh, go somewhere, that your body synthesize more leukocyte to defend the penetration of bacteria of the pathogen, for example. And then they will give you antibiotic uh, to prevent that. So what? why do need, I need to explain? Because many cases, and this is very often, that the other of the cow get infected. The other means the memory glands. The other, like a twin vô, is get infected. And then um, the cow will produce more leukocyte. More leukocyte will be pumped to the other to the memory gland to prevent the infection and then there will be more leukocyte in the milk. Uh, normally milk contains a certain number of leukocyte, but when it's become abnormally high, then it's a sign that the other of the cow get infected with pathogen, with bacteria. And then that's the time that we need to treat the cow. Right, and then the remaining of milk is called serum. Serum is actually a lot of water with soluble components inside. So what are the soluble components? The lactose, carbohydrates are the main one. Glucose is a part of lactose. It occurs at minor component, but the main carbohydrate of milk is lactose. And then organic acid, some proteins, but these are soluble proteins. And these are called whey protein. Okay, so what do we see now again? Milk has case in my cell, this, the, the protein which are not soluble. Whey protein, whey protein, the proteins though are soluble in water. And then we have somehow protein here as well. Protein in the milk fat globule membrane. This one occur at very small amount but important, we will discuss in the next chapter. And then there are minerals in the serum. We also have minerals, so quite a lot of minerals. If you look at uh, calcium, where is calcium? Here. In milk, the major part of calcium is distributed in the micelle. A smaller part is soluble in serum. But all the minerals like potassium, like sodium, magnesium, and so these ones are more distributed in the serum than in the micelle. Here they don't put any number, I mean it's kind of minor component in the micelle. There are also NPN. This one you call NPN. NPN, non-protein nitrogenous compound. The compound which contain nitrogen inside but they are not protein. For example, the peptide, the free amino acid, urea, and so on. They also occur at some level in milk. Even urea has also occurred in milk. And then enzymes, some soluble enzyme in the serum. Vitamins, some water-soluble vitamin. Vitamins include two groups, water-soluble and fat-soluble. The fat-soluble vitamins stay here, see, A, D, E, K. But here in the serum, we have water-soluble vitamins. There are also some trace elements, some elements which occur at very low concentration. This table is very good because up to now, you can just print this table with you and then time to time, uh, you can look at it to know more about milk.
Yes, so we are done with uh, part two, composition and structure. Do you have any question or we take a break before we go further?